Chris Towers is back, and he has questions. We'll discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, January 4th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by the returning Chris Towers. He is working on his rankings and has questions on these three players in particular. And we will start with CJ Abrams, who is coming off a breakout season with 18 homers, 47 steals, which were the fifth most in baseball. After he moved to the leadoff spot, he was amazing. 36 steals over his final 73 games. But we do have questions about splits against lefties and the price tag, which is 37.4 since December 1st. Yeah, and and the thing with C.J. Abrams is he clearly made a step, a t- took a step forward. And the thing you have to remember about his developmental path is while we've known about him as a prospect for a while, he was a top 25 prospect as long ago as 2020. There was a lot of fatigue around him because we he got opportunities pretty early on and didn't really do much with them. But he has only played 355 games as a professional. That is a really low number. And before last season, obviously, it was even lower, minus however many games he played last season, 130-something, right? So it's not necessarily unthinkable that, one, his development took a big step forward last season, and two, that his development's not done. We're still talking about a young player without a lot of experience, so you never want to write off that kind of development path, but there are also pretty big red flags in his profile for a guy who you're going to have to invest. I mean, right now it's a third round pick with the way these types of players tend to get pushed up draft boards. It might be a second round pick in some drafts. And that's just, it's an awfully high price to pay for a guy who one still hasn't proven he can hit lefties at the major league level, five twelve OPS last season, 40 strikeouts to eight walks. It was a big struggle for him. And just hasn't proven that the power he showed last year is sustainable. You know, his overall batted ball profile, pretty mediocre. 304 expected Woba in that range. His actual Woba wasn't much higher. So it's one where you maybe look at the full season statistics rather than break down the partial season. And that might give you a better place to set your expectations. But it's just, it's an awfully rich price for a guy who, has those kind of question marks when, you know, you compare him to like Estre Ruiz, who had 67 stolen bases, hit 254, only five home runs. I, I think C.J. Abrams is a better hitter, but the the stolen bases are carrying a lot of weight. And if if Abrams is more like a 12 homer guy, and he's more like a top or you know a 250 ish hitter it starts to become pretty tough to justify the price for, you know, what are essentially elite production in one category. All right, let's slide over to Nolan Jones, who just also had a breakout season and he hit 297 with 20 homers, 20 steals in only 106 games. He was one of 19 players to go 2020 this past season. The strikeout rate is very high. There are also very good things here. He hit lefties. Well, he hit on the road. Um, the ADP for Nolan Jones, 57 as the 15th outfielder off the board. Chris, what questions do you have about him? There's definitely some sticker pri- sticker shock with the outfield 15. And that kind of tells you like outfield's still not a great position and it hasn't been for the last couple of seasons because the overall ADP actually feels pretty reasonable to me. You know, in that 60-ish range, 50 to 60 for a guy who He's not going to hit 297 again. That came with a 401 BABIP, even at Coors Field. Like he might have a 400 BABIP at Coors Field, but doing it over the course of a full season, playing half your games away from Coors Field, it's almost certainly not going to happen. But because of Coors Field, he might be a 265, 270 hitter. And the power, you know, 25 to 30 homer power, that feels pretty legitimate. I'm not going to expect him to go 2020 again or a 28, 28 pace. Like he was on, you know, he had 19 steals and 190 something games at triple a, but I think there's enough to like with Nolan Jones playing half his games, of course field, I think is an important part of the fact, the case that I actually don't mind his price, even though I think it'll probably end up being pretty controversial throughout the off season. 
Let's wrap up quickly here with Tarek Skubal, who only made 15 starts returning from injury, but he was amazing in those starts. He had a 280 ERA, a .90 whip, well over a strikeout per inning. The ADP for Tarek Skubal, 53.4 as the SP12 off the board, and I think that price tag might surprise some people. Yeah, it's a little surprising as I go through the, the rankings process and, and get reacclimated with the player pool for 2024 and all that, but... You know, he's going about 10 spots after Tyler Glass now. We talked about this in the full show. I, I think Glass now probably gets the edge in terms of skill set. He's done it longer. What Scooble showed last season, pretty Tyler Glass now, though. You know, 31% strikeout rate, tons of whiffs. But I, I think it's fair to give Tyler Glass now the edge in talent. What I think Scooble gets the edge in is just even though he was coming back from a pretty major elbow surgery in 2020, his track record for health before that had been pretty clean in a way that it hasn't been for Tyler Glass now, who has thrown 150 innings once in his career way back in 2017 and has never thrown more than 120 at the major league level. Tarek Scooble has thrown 150 innings more recently and has done it at the major league level. So I think he's super skilled. Expect regression from last year for sure. But I kind of like Tarek Skubal as a top 12-ish starting pitcher. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> 